TV Sound System, you know what it is, select the hype live and direct. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button. Also remember the, notif the notification button to let you know every time we put up a brand new video. And we are keeping these videos moving right about now. I've got to say shout out, reach out to everybody who has been supporting the thing, TV Sound System. Also remember, Sound System Clothing Uniting Fashion and Music celebrating 10 years in 2020. Right in front of me right now, I say we're doing it like how we be we, constantly been doing the past couple of interviews it's all about past present and future and right now in front of me is one of the sound systems um, who have constantly been on form from the get-go they have constantly been i would say what an ultimate sound system should be having a sound system buying dub plates and going into sound clashes, win, lose, or draw. Marketing and promotion is on point. And we're going to sit down and speak to no other than the man himself, Junior P. How are you doing? Yeah, man. Good evening. Before we go, I didn't name your sound. I had a little bet with somebody a few days ago who was talking about the sound. Mm -hmm. Is it natural affair or natural affairs? Right, yeah, the sound is definitely natural affair. Okay. Not natural affairs. Even though obviously a lot of people say that, but it's I natural that, affair. You know. <laughs> I always thought it was natural affairs. No, man. Affair. And everybody kind of yeah. like, um, kind of like broke it down. Okay, let's go past. Okay. We're going to go right to the beginning. Junior P mm -hmm. in Telford. Where did that whole momentum come for you to say, I'm going to build a sound system? Well, really, um, from about 97, 1997, mm. I used to listen really to like Chris Golfing on the radio, um, Kilimanjaro, stuff like that really, mm. going to like, got my f kind of got my first job when I was like 16 or whatever, started to go to Birmingham, Don Chrissy Records, buying sound tapes and all that kind of stuff, coming home, listening to them. And I kind of just, it was the clash thing really originally that kind of get me, get me into it and get the momentum moving. Mm. But it was like Chris Golfing and that kind of was showing me the like teaching yeah, me the yeah. music really. If we go if we go back, sorry to cut you, if we go back a little bit, why mm -hmm. reggae music? What what was the appeal of reggae music at, at, to, at Well to at me obviously point, yeah. um well to me um I've got two mixed race brothers and two mixed race sisters. Mm -hmm. Um Jamaican. So they was kind of playing some music. Yeah. So I kind of got listening then and then from there really then just started listening to like like i say like chris goldfinger and stuff like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so then like i said we fast forward done christie's records yeah you started to buy music yeah um spending all was you money. was was you sp was you buying music to build a sound system or was it just like a hobby kind of like just buying the records then well it was a sound system thing that appealed to me really at first it was like i say with chris goldfinger i used to hear hear him go live on radio one ash mm -hmm. then it became asher world movements yeah and it was like when I go live, this, this is different. This is a different way of playing. This is different. Like, it's not like always on the radio. Yeah. So it started to show me a different side of things. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of really got me moving. Then I started obviously listening to Jaro then. Mm -hmm. And then the whole Ricky Trooper thing and, and the dubs. Mm -hmm. that's and what, yeah. at that time there, was you by yourself? Was it like just you? It was, me, it was me alone then, yeah. And then, and then at what point did you say, okay, then I'm going to build a sound? And where did it... Where did the sound, the name Natural Affair come from? Well, to be honest, it was something that I heard really. Heard it somewhere in a song or something and it just, it just came. Mm -hmm. That's it, it just came and it just, just Natural Affair just came, appeared really. Mm -hmm. And then from there, okay, you got the name Natural Affair. Mm -hmm. Was it, did you have a sound before you had the name or was it the name then the sound? No, the name, the name, the name. was first. Okay, and then you progressed into the from, sound. Yeah. Team. Let's talk about the sound team because um, you have a really good sound system. Yeah, yeah. It's always yeah. been on form. Yeah. Um, where did you start? What was the first thing? What was the first piece of equipment that you remember well, saying, you know yeah, what? man, I, I heard about no. What it is, I heard about this guy after a few years of DJing at parties in Telford or whatever, um, seen a couple of signs around the place. Um, and I, I used to go, I used to DJ actually in Birmingham, mm -hmm. in, um, in Los Els. The plaza okay and I as used to, natural affair or junior just Pete? just natural affair yeah but okay. i used to go there like it because with friends and stuff i used to go there all hours in the morning three or four o'clock in the morning had my 45s never even had a case for them cardboard box in there yeah. into the plaza <laughs> Old school. 
Yeah. And I was playing the fortifiers in there. And from then, I got I heard about sound system and, you know, I knew about sound system. I knew about what it was and stuff, but I heard about the equipment side of things. Yeah. And then somebody told me about Lynx. So, yeah, he's the man. Yeah. He's the guy that builds sound systems. And that was it, really. Got his number, mm-hmm. called him, and then went to meet him. Bought a couple of little things like um, the lick shop machines yeah. first. Well, that's all I could afford at them times anyway. Uh-huh. And then um, from there, really, I kept the link. And when I was able to do it, I went there and, I, and it, the sound built very fast. Mm-hmm. Gotta say R.I.P. to Links, man. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Original, original sound, man. So the sound is building now. Mm-hmm. It seems, and, it, and you've said it on, on, on many occasions that you kind of really built Natural Affair as a clash sound, a dub plate sound. Mm-hmm. Um, when did the dub plate start coming in? When, when once you yeah, had the sound? Yeah, so, so from about, I would say about 98, 99. Obviously, he's getting a little bit older now. I was at college and stuff, so the money was a bit difficult. Mm-hmm. But even though dub plates were a lot cheaper then. Yeah. And I got started to, you know what I started to do? I'll be honest with you. Remember the 45s? This is my. This is how I, I I start to do stuff. The forty fives. I used to read the forty fives and see the numbers on them. Okay. Telephone numbers of the studios. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I find one number now, on a Gregory Isaacs forty five. I called the studio, and I guess I, I spoke to Gregory Isaacs, uh-huh. and that was a really big thing for me back then. Spoke to Gregory Isaacs now. Started talking about dub plates. Next thing, we've got our first dub plate, which is a Gregory Isaacs. Wow, that's a mad thing, you know, because I think. Um as simple as it is, it's the most obvious thing to do. Yeah. Like, just check the 45. The numbers are on there. Yeah, yeah. Ring the number. Get the link. Um, You got the link with Gregory Isaac. That must have been crazy. Mm-hmm. You got the first Gregory. Was it Was it just a one dub plate or... One dub plate, yeah. At which the one time. was it? Which one, which it was a song called Gimme. It's a long time song mm-hmm. on one of the old albums. Like, it was called Gimme, it was. That was yeah. the first dub plate we cut from, from him. And, and at the time, it was probably about £60. Mm-hmm. Pound. mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And how, how did it get sent to you? Yeah, so that song there got sent to me by FedEx mm-hmm. on a DAC cassette. Okay. Mm-hmm. For those who don't know about DAC cassette, yeah. you know, that's going way, way back. So, okay, you get the buzz now. You've got the one Gregory Isaac mm-hmm. song. It must feel like so you can kill everything with this one tune. How did you continue to progress and um, work out your style of the way you wanted to cut dub plates? Um. Just really, like I said, again, it was like listening to sounds, really. Mm-hmm. Like Jaro, then you start to hear Stone Love, and then Bass Odyssey came into it, and certain sounds, obviously. Then then I got to hear about David Rodigan, because it was late. Mm-hmm. I didn't really get to hear about David Rodigan until after. Okay. If, if that makes sense. It was yeah, it yeah. was mainly Chris Golfing, Asher World, and, and Jaro I heard first. Mm-hmm. And then I got to hear about David Rodigan, and then it, that seeing David Rodigan then got me more. Mm-hmm. It, it got me, you know, it built up my momentum a bit more then. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just started looking at different things and I just started hearing more dubs and then that started to make me think I need to go and cut this dub and I need to see if I can find this and and I took it from there really. And at that time there, back. was you thinking about having a team? Because obviously it's still you by yourself. Originally. You're buying your dub plates then. Like, like what, what was your, what was your kind of like vision? Was it going to be like, yo, I'm just going to rep this and do it myself? Or was that, was there always a vision to say, you know what, I'm going to build a, a, like a, a sound system click? Um, to be honest, it, it, when I first, obviously when I was at that stage, I didn't really think of a team. Because mm-hmm. when I was hearing on cassette tapes, like like I say, Jaro, it was only Troop I was hearing mm-hmm. at the time. And the game with golfing, it was just golfing I was hearing. But then I started to realise how it, how, it how it was working and I started to see like there's a lot of people that behind the scenes, a lot of people in a sound it takes to make the sound work. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, that's when I thought, that's when... Um, my friend, just not long come from Jamaica in, in Telford, Irvin, me and him did, we, we started to work together. Okay. And then he was, he's like, I used to tell him, he was really surprised that I, that I knew so much about, about the music and stuff. And then he was like, oh, we need to link up or whatever. And then we linked up. Mm-hmm. And then he was a person then that kind of helped me in Telford take it to the next level with promotions and helping me a lot doing things. And that mm-hmm. was when the team thing started to unfold. Okay, so again, um. I've been in Telford for the people who who are watching right now and not familiar with Telford because you're like literally seven minutes away from Wolverhampton, mm-hmm. depending on if you drive like me. Um, what was the vibes like in Telford in terms of reggae music and sound system culture? Well, back then, 
it was really good, to be honest. We had a place where, when, I, when me and Irvin linked up, we had a place called the Elephant and Castle. I don't know okay. if you remember it. Yeah, 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 I remember, man. But we had that place and it was, it was like a big pub, mm. a really big pub. Yeah, I remember it. And man. we used to, like, we started doing monthly events and we used to ram it out complete full to back, mm -hmm. straight like a ram. And from there, really, yeah, it was, it was, it's been big. It's, reggae's been big in Telford. Mm -hmm. to Name be honest. some of the sounds, because there's a few sounds. There's a couple of sounds, yeah, from the, the sounds that I kind of, yeah, um, there's Piranha sound. And there's third generation sound that come from Telford as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but there, back then when I was young, growing up, and at the same times like 97 times, obviously they were playing them times, mm. but not a lot. Okay. Third generation was playing more than what Piranha was. Mm -hmm. um, in Telford, they did a few. They was doing a few things in Telford, and they did a couple of things out of town and stuff. It was, mm. it was in a, actually in a couple of clashes, to be honest. Yeah. At them times, they were they had they were voicing dubs. You know what I mean? They mm. had they had they had songs. But um. But yeah, but but after really, I just just came on the scene and just. Did they give you any kind of inspiration, like when they was doing their thing in Telford and? Clearly, you was already on your, your own own mission of, of doing what yeah. you were doing. But was there any kind of like vibes that you got from them that you could yeah. kind of like work off? To be honest, yeah, they did give me some inspiration because they were doing their thing in Telford at the time. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That they was, you know, they were playing at dances and they were, you know, they were pulling crowds in Telford. They were pulling mm. Telford crowd. So they were doing the things. They did give me inspiration. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So you know what it is massive is TV sound system selector hype up inside the building. Junior P is here. It's a little bit on the past. Um, we, it's really crazy with you because the transition of natural affair, which I'm trying to get the people them to understand, is well for me then, for me personally then. I don't know about anybody else that's tuning in. I just heard about a sound from Telford called Natural Affair, fully loaded. Mm -hmm. End of story, and I was like, whoa! Managed to catch you a few times, and I was like, this sounds just playing every single thing. So. The, how long did it take for the first Gregory Isaac dub plate mm -hmm. right up until the moment where you think people started to speak to na speak about natural affair? How long do you think that it transition took, was? It took, I reckon it, um, it took from, from then, from 97 till 2005, mm -hmm. where I think people started to realise who he was because mm. that's the point where we started to come out of town. Yeah. If that makes sense and people... People started to recognise us, mm -hmm. 2005, and that that was a clash. Then we went into um, the Premier League Cup clash. Yeah, yeah. And that was your first clash. That was our first clash. Okay, we're going to fast forward to right up into that present moment. There, there obviously was something that you always wanted to be in. Um, how did you feel about actually realising that you're in a sound clash moment right now? And and doing what you what you always planned out to be. Yeah, it was. It felt good, and it, it, that's what that's exactly where we, where I wanted to be, and where we wanted mm -hmm. to be. And at that point, there, we, it was again. It was it was me and Irvin. Then he was called Two Dollar. That $2, was his, that yeah. was his name. Yeah. Um, we did really good in that clash. To be honest, that was mm -hmm. our first clash. I think we came third. I think you was in that clash, isn't it? Yeah, man. I came second to Ecstasy. Yeah. I hate that. that dance so yeah, so it's oh, Ecstasy. <laughs> ecstasy. German Natural German. Affair. And there's another sign. It was Expression. Expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Expression. Yeah, yeah. Um. I think there's one more sign in there. I don't know, you know, I can't even I remember. I think there was. I can't remember that, but it, that was it. That was um, it was a really good clash, and it. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of respect for that from that clash, to be honest, because we went in there and we played a lot of yeah, new think, songs. I, yeah, I think. I and think we had fans the in there. We took we took a good amount of a good forty people in there. Yeah, I think um, that was the the moment where I think people was like, okay, this sound yeah. is definitely a sound, not to ramp with. They mm -hmm. got songs, you know what I mean? Because I yeah. was in that clash as well, and. As much as I was going, going, going through it, I always was like, yo, this is our natural affair. Okay, they was playing some songs that we had in the box that we wanted to play, and it was like, rah, man, and just reel off the songs then mad quick. Um, you're clashing now. Your mm -hmm. name's out there. You're buying the songs then. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the clashes then that you've been in, because one thing that, I, like I said in the beginning, is that you're a sound that isn't afraid to no. win, lose, draw in clashes. Um. You've promoted and pushed the clash thing so much. Mm -hmm. Just name some of the clashes then that you've been in and some of your um, memorable ones then. Yeah, we've we've been in a lot of obviously a lot of clashes. Um from um Bring Your Tunes and Defend Your Sound in London. We did it we've been in it many times, a good three or four times. And a lot of the, the stuff in London that they were doing at them times, you know, 
probably five, six, seven years ago. Um, we've been in a good few clashes abroad, overseas, mm -hmm. like Tech Nine in Brooklyn, New York, and Rootsman, which we did very good in. Mm -hmm. Which that clash there earned us because of how well we performed in that clash. That earned us the right to go into um, into a clash in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah. You've you've been in so many clashes and again i'm going to go back and forth on the team because there's just so many things that 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 you've been through as well um your marketing and promotion is up there and just you mentioning um clashing over there with tech nine i mm. remember my baby mother going to new york yeah she was in new york and we, i said yo get me this get me that get me that i said yo any cds or anything bring them over here mm -hmm. And she come back with three natural affair CDs and she said, this is the hottest thing in America right now. Mm. And I was like, <laughs> how, did, how did the sound from Telford go all the way to New York to bring them all the way back to me? Um, explain a little bit on how the way you, you marketed and promoted yourself. Because that was mad early. There yeah. was a, not a lot of well, sounds yeah. who was putting CDs out, track Correct, listed, yeah every single thing like like why did you take so much time and effort to do that i'll tell you all right the the, what, the first thing that made me do the cds and obviously try to do it in a way where i could touch talk to the world mm. was because i never had a really had a big team or a team um around me as such so i couldn't i couldn't go into the dance hall as such on my own i could have done it you know but i wasn't confident enough at the time mm. so my way was talking to the world was was to do these mixes yeah and and put it out like that and obviously we were quite branded and we had we had a logo and all that kind yeah, of stuff yeah, from yeah. a very very, uh, very long sounds, time man, then yeah. we had a website and stuff so yeah so that was the first thing mm -hmm. that i did really and i started to keep it consistent putting the cds out there and they touched it the, the, the cds gone they went really far yeah, all clearly. japan i seen like my cd all with japanese writing all over it and i was thinking mm -hmm. what's going on here then i used to click on ebay and i'd seen i'd seen natural affairs cds for sale yeah for sale and then even sometimes I even used to go on my family holiday to Jamaica sometimes. I was in um, Margaritaville. Mm -hmm. Just sat down. I, all my family came this year. Okay. Sat down. And they started to play a Taurus Riley CD mix. Mm -hmm. And it was it was a natural affair CD mix. Yeah. So I went all the way to Jamaica to hear the, hear the mix playing in a holiday place. Well, in Margaritaville, in Montego Bay. And it's yours. And it's our CD. How mad did that yeah. feel? It's crazy. Going back to the dub plating as well now, because because I think the, the, the one of the key things that I'm going to be talking about to you is dubs. Mm -hmm. I think it's inevitable that we just have to talk about the level of your dub plate cutting. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, talk about your first time going to Jamaica and 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 why did you feel like you had to go to Jamaica and, and start to voice the songs then? Right. Okay. So, so yeah. So um, my first time in Jamaica was I was. 17 16 sorry i was i was 16. Mm -hmm. i went on like an um we used to have a youth club in telford obviously i was always already into the music that was when i first started listening so 16 went to jamaica now on this on this trip it was like an exchange trip mm -hmm. that i work because my the youth club i used to go to i kn knew the people really well because we was we was uh, like the kids always mm -hmm. running around there and stuff playing football or whatever and um he was jamaican Okay. So he, he organized this trip and about eight of us went. So we're in Jamaica now. Everybody's just doing what they're doing. Mm. And then me, like we had a taxi man driving us around from place to place. <laughs> so me and I, everyone's staying at the where, where we were staying now. I asked the taxi man, the Stone Love was playing in Orchard Rios. Uh, so I asked the taxi man, I, I want to go to this, I need to go to this you Stone won. Love. So me won, <laughs> paid the taxi man, went to the Stone Love dance. Uh, and that's the first time I've seen, really seen, a big sound system playing with a team, with dub plates, uh -huh. sound, and the one thing that I, I never forget was the was the um, the sampler. He had a man playing, using just running the sampler alone, mm. and the dub plates were just they had tables, and the dub plates were just stacked up all over the tables. Did you know about Stone Love prior? I heard to, about to yeah, I heard about Stone Love, but I wasn't. I still so didn't really know that much of it. Yeah, effect. and that was when I was sixteen. Yeah. So and you went to the dance by yourself, yeah. taxi driver, taxi driver, <laughs> and yeah. then going into that dance there. Um, how did you feel when you left? What, what was yeah. that? Your, 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 what zone was, was like, you in after that? That was just like the biggest thing for me. 
Mm-hmm. That that set my chip then. It set everything I was doing. Because I was, I was staying in Jamaica then for like six weeks. It was okay. six weeks there. So wow, man. So, um, so yeah, that was just, that set everything up for me. Mm-hmm. And then my next move then was, again, because we were staying in Ocho Rios. We were staying at the high school in Ocho Rios. The same high school that the new, the new artist, Javalani, went to. Yeah. But we stayed in that high school, like on some beds on the floor and stuff, concrete floor. Mm-hmm. And we kind of had to live like like how, how you know certain people in Jamaica live. Mm. We had to we had to like kind of live the way they were living mm. and stuff. So we had to do things like you know like that really. And then it's crazy really. Mm-hmm. So when did when did when did that progression of the dub plate cutting come in while you was in Jamaica? Was, was that happening then, or was it another trip? Or yeah, yeah so that yeah, the dub plate thing didn't really come then. It was kind of after. We kind of backtracked, but it's kind of yeah, it's yeah. kind of after. I hear you. Um, so yeah, so then my second trip to Jamaica is when I first started the dub plate thing. So my mm-hmm. second trip now, I was 18. Okay. Again, I called, I had a record, Junior Reed record. Mm-hmm. Called the number off the record. <laughs> Ended up getting somebody. Um, My friend, Chip Eye. Mm-hmm. At the time, he used to hang about with Junior Reed. So Chip, Chip Eye comes on the phone to me. I say, I need Junior Reed dub plates. Yeah. So, um... I can get you junior reed place, no problem. You know what I mean? We, he's here right now with me, so we can deal with it. So they've got to link this guy now. And then he, that's where it all started. Mm-hmm. Started voicing songs. Then he he said to me, I'll, I can, I'll voice junior reed and I'll get you some more songs. So he got the songs for me. And then got junior reed. At the time, there was an artist called Million Teeth. I don't know if you remember wow, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Million yeah. Teeth. Um, Little Hero. Mm-hmm. A couple more artists. And then after that, after that was done, I bought a plane ticket, mm-hmm. went to Jamaica. Um, he arranged for us to play with um, Alaska at the time, was just coming out yeah. when they were fresh and yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah. Alaska and a sound from Westmoreland called Super B. Mm-hmm. And then when I got there, I voiced Beres and Bujo Banton in combination. Okay. At Arrow Studio. And you was there in, in your, obviously. You I was there, yeah. There straight person. to the, voiced it straight to the plate. Okay, so now, now let's talk. This is why we're talking about the dub plating mm-hmm. and the artist thing. You've gone from where we talked the past, and now you're in the studio mm-hmm. with Berry's Hammond and Budger Banton. Mm-hmm. How does that conversation go from going there, talking to them, to them voicing the song that you want? This is it, and it just starts to become reality then, and you start to feel like I'm actually really doing this. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the same thing for me back then, when I was first like getting to know everything and getting involved in it, everything was just so, everything I was doing and when I was achieving something like that, like them type of things, mm. it was such a big thing for me. It was massive. It was something like, like if I got the duplet, I'd have to, I played it about a thousand times over. Yeah. Stuff like that. And like obviously when I went to Jamaica that time then, got to Jamaica, seen posters with Natural Affairs name on it, even though the name was spelt slightly wrong <laughs> but yeah so good. but you know remember the posters used to yeah. off, the, off a machine mm-hmm. like um like colored posters like a, yeah like a, like a felt tip pen kind yeah. of vibes in it them like posters were just style. everywhere mm. everywhere and then obviously playing on that dance after going to the studio voicing the Berries and Budger Banton mm-hmm. at the same time I voiced Silver Cat <laughs> I voiced uh, a power man mm-hmm. on the head to toe rhythm yeah. and then that was all I had really that I voiced at the time. That's all I could afford. I never had no money them times yeah. really. So then we went to this. We went to the dance. Drove from Kingston right to Westmoreland. Far drive, mm. crazy drive it was. I remember it like four hours or something. How did your performance go? And you know what? I pl- it's me alone that played. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, when I dropped the Beres and Budju, all I can remember is is people just licking the fence, beating up the yeah. fence, mashing up the fence. I still got to get it around my head because for the people who are, who are logging in right by, this is why I'm talking about like having these conversations, mm-hmm. documenting things because I never, I, well, I have been to Jamaica. I've been to Jamaica. I went for like six, seven weeks, mm-hmm. but that was mad young. I was mad young. Yeah. I never really went, but no, I haven't been to voice dub plates or be in the dance or sound clash thing to go and voice songs and that. Mm-hmm. Bujo, Berries. Mm-hmm. How, how, how was the, com- like, did you expect what you expected from them? Like, like, like how did they, like, how were they as artists in, yeah, in real life? Honestly, re- like, Beres, Beres, they're really cool people, you know, really, when mm-hmm. you talk to them. The re- yeah, f- everything was, was cool. And just, 
just for me, it was just massive just to see them in, in a person. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, just straight in it. At the times at Arrow Studio, straight in the studio, in the booth. At the time, a Japanese sound was voicing them. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name. It's a, it's a sound that I don't think is around anymore. But yeah, there's a Japanese sound voicing them. And then it was because of them why th why they was at the studio. Okay. Because sometimes I d artists don't really go to the studio if, if people ain't really got the money to spend or whatever. But because they was already organized the work, mm. my friend heard, do you know people were going, we're going yeah, to Arrows yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to see what we can do. Went to Arrows and then we ended up I had wow. a little money and the, the arms were turned and that was liquor, it. Liquor. Butcher and Berries was liquor yeah. money. <laughs> but then I tell you, I don't even remember what I paid for that song, but I'm telling you, it it probably wasn't probably any more than 200 pound. Mm. Two to 300 pound. Fast forward now and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big deal. Okay, so so we're going to kind of like quickly get to the, the, the present and then we're going to talk about the future. Big shout mm. out, reach out to the rest of the Natural Affair team. If you're watching right now, look out for part two. We're going to have the rest of the Simon and them who are part of Natural Affair right now. It's a new team and they're looking really positive towards the future. Let's talk about the teams then. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ask the questions then, not what the people then want, also kind of like what I want to hear as well. Mm -hmm. um, your teams over the years have seemed to switch and change and rearrange um do you think why why is why why has that happened why is it like i i, cause I can remember from two dollar mm -hmm. to um jay katana yeah then we went on on and there was always like every few years it was a new team what okay. what was not connecting to make it a constant thing where you have certain sounds that can go 10, 15, 30 years with the same yeah. set of man. Okay, um, all right, so yeah, so Two Dollar was, he was with me from kind of, not completely there, not day one, mm -hmm. but he was with me when the sound was evolving at the mm -hmm. part, you know, in Telford. Yeah. And he did a lot of work with me behind the scenes, you know. Is that Jay? Evol no, um, Two Dollar. Two Dollar, sorry. Yeah. Evolving the sound. Mm -hmm. So big up yourself, Two Dollar. He yeah. did a lot Where's of work. Where's he at now? As a family man, and he does a lot of hours working and stuff, but okay. still supports our events Ratings in Telford. Man. And, and yeah, he, he, even all the clashes that we've been in, he still comes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that was then. Then, obviously, some of the younger guys came on the sound, like, um, oh, so, yeah, so, so, um, Selector Harley came on the sound. Mm -hmm. Um, young guy started DJing and stuff, mm -hmm. came on the sound. Um, he's still, he's still around us as well. Still mm -hmm. around us, not really. He's not left or nothing like that. He's still yeah, around yeah. us. He's just, you know, in this in this business and in in in, in life in general, everyone's life is different, mm -hmm. and everyone have different commitments. Yeah, and so not everybody can commit to a sound system as such. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why some of the team changes. A mm -hmm. um, couple other people that's been in the team, Ben One Hundred, a Scott? few of them. Yeah, Selector Harley, that's Scott. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Scott. Harley. Harley's my dude, man. No, yeah. like, so Selector Harley is Scott. It's yeah. a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's but, he, but he's, you know, he's still, he's still amongst us. He's just, mm -hmm. he just, like I say, you know, everybody have commitments. Okay. So now, so when Scott and them came in the team, playing in town for the game, doing a little thing, clashes, always there, helping out, moving the stand and all that. Um, then me and Jay Katana got linked. We got linked because... Um, he had a, he played in a sound in, in Trinidad called Excalibur. Mm -hmm. The same sound that like you know Walshy Killer, he's with um, Major, Laser. Major Laser. Yeah, he comes he comes from the same sound. Okay, they were like close them times. So yeah, so he ended up in England, mm -hmm. living in London. He heard about Natural Affair, the same thing people here, and these guys have got these dubs, man, and it's. So he ended up contacting me. We we ended up linking up. We did some li little radio stuff in London when he was on. He was on a radio in London called Unity FM or something like that. Mm. Went down there a few times, played on there. Then he kind of got more interested in Natural Affair. So then he mm. joined the sound, and then it was Katana then that took the sound with myself. He, we took it to a next level then because he had a voice. Mm -hmm. So that was something that Natural Affair was missing for a long time. A big part of the sound we yeah. never had a voice really. So then he had the voice. So then it that kind of helped us then move into the dancehall scene and move into the scene there where we can start actually playing more in front of people outside Telford, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Which is what we started to do. And then with the team situation again, Katana was with us for qu quite a long time. Mm -hmm. He was with us for qu quite a few years, many years really. Um, again, family commitments. 
wasn't able to commit to the sound. Mm -hmm. Still a big, big follower of the sound. Still speak to Katana quite, you know what, you know. Yeah, big him up, man. But still, again, have to big him up because he did his, you know, he's put his works in natural mm -hmm. affair. But again, family stuff. Mm -hmm. Had a, He had a, a son a couple of years ago. Um, but you see, with with, um, with Jay Katana as well, he was more, he's a, he's a family person anyway. Mm -hmm. So he didn't really want to commit to the sound. And th at the time, the sound started to move out abroad. We were going abroad a lot. Mm -hmm. we, was, we was in Boston like every year six seven times we played in boston and stuff we were juggling in boston like quite regularly really mm -hmm. so we were moving around the place and it was just a bit too much for katana mm -hmm. so that's why that happened and then um so yeah so then before katana left the sound mm -hmm. we ended up bringing on this on the, um a youth from wolverhampton named squidly bashman mm -hmm. how did that transition rate work i actually didn't know how it went you know because um <laughs> he told me like he was a man he was a mad moment still we won't put it on camera i always remember seeing him in the manda center in wolverhampton i was just about i just bought a brand new blackberry mm -hmm. and i seen him and he says yo blackberry i think you know give me the pin and this that, and the other and i remember him messaging me and he says you're gonna find out soon but i'm playing natural affair and i was like raw that's a good move man because man was already playing sound and thing and mm. then his next answer was like, yeah, and we're going to kill every single body. Mm. <laughs> and I thought, wow, he was just on a vibe. How did the connection kind of like work? How did that come together? So, yeah, so obviously I've seen Squidly a few times. Squidly used to play on his own. On his own. Um, I think he was around, sounds like um, Kibo Negus from back in the day, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he, he played on his own for a lot, a lot of the time. You know, when I knew him, when I seen him first. And then, yeah, he, we linked up. He asked me. We linked up. And then actually took the sound to a next level. Mm -hmm. You know, really took it to a next level. Um, started juggling. We, we had our radio show then. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember on Ira UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That caused crazy. crazy. I tell you, me and Squilly then was really, really strong. I think, I think at that time as well, with Squidly, I think he was very prepared to go all out do or die, yeah. whatever. And you, who has built a sound that is just about clashing, really, yeah. it's all about the dubs. I think it was a mad shock factor to a lot of people, especially your radio show on Irie, because it was like, whoa, mm -hmm. people's phones were caught. Getting, yeah, yo, yeah. yo, man's calling your name, yeah. you know. And it was like a, it was a. Did you purposely do that? Yeah, we did. We did. We did purposely do it because we used to talk it. We said we're trying to get the business moving because mm -hmm. at the time things were stale. So, and it did work. Yeah. It did work because it kind of did get things moving and it started to get people involved again. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a disrespect thing or nothing like that. It was, it was perfect. It was just completely sound system yeah. thing. And we tried to get it moving, tried to get people. Did you get any backlashes off some sounds? Because you was calling some sounds names, you know, and I was not thinking, really, you know, this is a little bit hard, not you know. Not really. Because <laughs> my phone, there was a few times my phone rang and it was like, yo, yeah, listen, yeah. that's enough, yeah. All, all ecstasy. I said, yo, they call my name. No, they don't call your name. No, but them cars. So I saw a name. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, yo, why are you calling me? Like, like, did yeah, any? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was. Not it, calling out anybody's name, but did yeah. anybody get a little bit like digi on the ticket? Not really, like, no. Oh, yeah. To be honest, not really. Mm -hmm. Not really. Nah. A lot of people, because it was, it, it was actually gaining. Like, it was, it was, it was just getting massive people. You know, yeah. it was gaining a lot of fans. You know, it was getting hot, mm -hmm. and people was really interested in it because, because it's controversy sells it sells mm. so and that was our point we we're trying to make so because we were trying to get into that kind of way and try to do that for in, in the set because we knew the sound thing mm. and we knew how it kind of how it, how it is we tried to make it like that so the people was interested every week so when mm. when they come back now they want to hear i want to see whose name is going to call up this week yeah, yeah. i want to see who's going to he's going to you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that that's why we did it for okay so squid is there he's doing his thing mm -hmm. took it to the next level yeah we did we took done a lot of tours Mm -hmm. Worldwide, yeah, playing here, playing there. You know what I mean? We, you know, we, we playing. You got play a TV show in it. Yeah, yeah. It was always in where was you? Bermuda, Grenada, Grenada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the Caribbean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. On, a t things, on, on TV, yes. Yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot, and and like it says, you know, credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like this is my channel. He's doing his thing. I'm not here to discredit anybody at all. Um, but at the same time, a lot of people are saying, "Where's Squidly?" Right mm. now, is he a part of Natural Affair? Is he not? Can you well, confirm? Because he kind of... All, all, all I can say on, on the matter of, of Squidly, 
really. Like I say, I have to give Squidly respect where it's due. Mm. Squidly put a lot of work into Natural Affair, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Done a lot together, put a lot of work into the sound. Um, and all I'm going to say really is that I just have to wish him well mm-hmm. uh, while he's doing what he's doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it, really. There's so is he a part of Natural Affair or not? Or is, is, it, is it a case of the door still open kind of situation? It's, it's, it's a case really that I can't answer, really, if that makes sense. I can't really answer that, if that makes sense, because all I can do is commend Scooty for the work he's done for us. Mm-hmm. But I have to just, you know, big him up for what he's done, really. That's it. Okay. It's cool. a thing where there's nothing to answer, really, on that, on that really. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To an extent. To an, yeah. But it's. It, I hear what you're saying. Do you know I, what I'm I, saying? I, I, it's yeah, it's yeah, one yeah, of them things what, what I don't saying, really want to. Like, yeah, really. Because I have to, re- I have to respect what Squilly's done as, uh-huh. a, as, a, as a sound owner, mm-hmm. something I built that Squilly came into. Yeah. I have to respect because he put work into the mm-hmm. sound. Yeah. And that's it, really. Yeah. I don't really, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. So it's a thing where that's it. Okay, then so so everybody them who've been asking the question, you know, where's Squidly in this and whatever, there he is. You know, I mean, it is what it is. We're not going to go too deep into the thing. Uh, times move on, and like we says, you know, we're not here to discredit anybody or put anybody down or anything like that. Everybody keeps the thing moving. Now it's moving. Mm-hmm. I want to fast forward to a scenario that took place. Something that for me was a mad game changer mm-hmm. but it seemed like it went over everybody's head mm-hmm. your marketing and promotion is crazy yeah. as you says ivy uk you're going out calling sounds man's phone's ringing i'm yeah. like i'm mad chilling you know my phone's blazing off mm-hmm. like different sound man are calling me saying yo not trying to feel i did this did it fast forward you come out with a cd mix I won't even say it's a CD because modern times now it could be on any platform. Yeah. You came out with a goffy them. Mm-hmm. I need to understand why you. <laughs> what was the scenario with your team to say, yo, we're going to do this and this is what we're going to do? All right. So, all right. At the time when, we, when we we're looking at for the goffy them mix now, we're kind of like, is it, when, I, when the team, we sat down. We were just talking. We just we because we link we link most weeks anyway, so we're talking, and we're just looking at the business really, looking what's going on in, in the UK at the time, mm. and there wasn't really nothing going on really, you know what I mean? Mm. After Rumble UK Rumble, I think not much happened after that, regarding yeah, 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 not much happened, mm-hmm. and I noticed it was just went a bit, you know what I mean? So, I thought you know, I think we need to just again, it's the same kind of promote, the same kind of marketing as what we did what I used to do on the radio, mm. R-U-K. So again, it was a thing where we said, you know what, we have to wake up people again now. Mm. So, we we put a CD out there, we built it in a certain way. How, how, how it many it was. people had the input on that? Because, let's not get it twisted, it wasn't just a little, little regular CD with Murder She Wrote and When no. I See You Smile. <laughs> you went mad hard. Yeah. We're talking Gappy Customs. Yeah. We're talking Customs up t- on top of Customs and yeah. I'm going to yeah, just 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 let just let us know what wh- how much how much input did you get from everybody to make that happen? Oh yeah, that that all the team members had an input in that CD. Mm-hmm. So ideas came from all around the team. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, we just put it together and we kind of just knew we had some custom dubs there and some songs were actually voiced for the CD. Mm-hmm. And it was just put together really and put out there for that purpose. And obviously, we attacked on the CD, I have to say, we, we attacked in a certain way. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, when the CD went out, we attacked certain certain words were, were, were writ in the custom dub plates, mm-hmm. which kind of unfolded after a thing okay. they call 45 Shop Lock. Yeah. And cause that 45 shot luck to happen mm-hmm. what what did did the cd do what you wanted it to do yes definitely most definitely and what was that again the marketing of the sound got people talking about natural affair mm-hmm. created bookings mm-hmm. um and just just re- really what worldwide just just promoted yeah. us again it just mm-hmm. made people say this sound like this sound is going for people mm-hmm. And they don't really business, and the man them have some dubs on there. That's, mm. you know what I mean. I think it was a, a great marketing move. Um, if I had to fault it, and that's just me mm-hmm. being petty. When that CD came out, mm-hmm. from I heard the intro, 
I'm going to tell you like in front of your face and on camera. I sat down with a pen and paper and I says, I'm going to write down every single song. Yeah, I'm like, yo, I'm going, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm taking this in. Yeah. I got to track 97 and I said, I can't bother anymore now. <laughs> you, was, <laughs> you nearly clapped out a hundred dub plates. Yeah. Um, why did you go so... Because you could have go, you could have go for them in like twenty minutes, man. No, no, but definitely. You totally went on a on a, a thing where I just says, you know, I I, I got I got other things to do. Because <laughs> you, yeah. you totally annihilated the situation. And and the, the one thing that I, I do respect you for is to do that. But I think that a lot of the sounds them didn't really respond how they should have in um. terms of. Like if my sound wasn't called on there, either we're gonna clash yeah. or I'm gonna do a CD to answer you back. Yeah. I think a lot of the sounds them um, kind of brushed it to one side and was like, uh, I just some little mixed thing. And it, how did you feel about that? Um, well, really, it didn't didn't re didn't really cross my mind really about what the sounds thought to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because you see, when the CD drop, it just I think when you when you think about it, when the CD did drop. Mm -hmm. About two days after or a day after, we started getting calls. We got calls from all war reports straight away. Yeah. Yo, Juniper, you need to, you need to answer your phone. We need to do that. You know, we need to interview this this CD man. This is take, this is this is mad. This is mad stuff or whatever. And they understand the concept of it. And yeah. same like Science System Sundays, mm -hmm. they wanted to interview about the CD. Mm -hmm. So straight away, that CD's already worked for us. Yeah. Because it's already put it's already catapulted to that platform. Mm -hmm. So it's as simple as as it is. It did that for us. But the CD was also, even though it was called Go For Them, and it, had, it was designed to attack the sounds. And, and to be honest, we attacked, the, they, we attacked a lot of the sounds that are relevant to attack, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we did that. But at the same time, there was, some, there was music on there that, that could be put on that CD, yeah. if that makes sense. So mm. when I talk about that, because we've got so much dub plates, sometimes we have to exercise songs. Mm. So it was a way to just... Because the business at the time there wasn't much happening, there's a way to just put some songs out there and say, yeah, mm -hmm. Natural Affairs, Ear, and you know, it was one of them type of things, really. Yeah, it was it was a great marketing move. I think mm -hmm. it was it was it was pretty cool. Every now and then, I I, I do actually go back to it and, and yeah. like, what <laughs> it is yeah. a mad thing. Are we going to see a go for them part two? He might do still. You might. Is that going to happen? Yeah, it could happen. Okay, so you heard it there, massive TV Good. sound system. Junior P's up inside the place. Natural affair. Um, we're gonna go to the present moment. We're gonna speak to the rest of your new team very soon. Mm -hmm. But for somebody that's been in this business for so long, again, we have to go back on to the dub plate thing. Mm -hmm. Um, the cost of dub plates, the prices are going up. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, mix up and blend out of road now about the artists and charging too much mm -hmm. and so forth. How do you feel in the situation that you are now, considering that you are literally a, a dub plate cutting sound? Well, yeah. Um, obviously, we do cut quite frequently. We do cut a lot of dubs, and it, it's not easy to be honest nowadays because the prices are crazy, mm. very, very crazy. Um, but I suppose nowadays, because there's so much music out there, you've got to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Some, it, it, it's sometimes it, it kind of I, I listen to some clashes and stuff, but I feel a lot of sounds are playing the same music. Mm. If that, you know what I mean? They're playing the same music in the same way, and you know, as a sound like like Natural Fair been cut in a long time, and we haven't been, we haven't clashed since Top Striker. We haven't really clashed mm. or, or really done much like that because yeah. we're on a different. We're on a different path now, if that makes sense. We're on a different path. So I'm able now to look at whatever other signs are doing and the levels that they're at. Mm. And yeah. But I feel because of the cost of dub plates, you can kind you, you can actually hear it in the clashes. I understand. I hear it in the clashes. Mm -hmm. And because of the way uh, what I cut and the way I do it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It, I can kind of see where people are. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, I can I can hear where signs are. Yeah. And I can see that the price of dubs has had an effect on Clash, Sound Clash. It has. Yeah. But you Do you think it will have an effect on you? On Natural Affair? Mm. Obviously, yeah. It has to have an effect on me because <laughs> I'm only you, man. <laughs> yeah, and I thought he was going to say, and no, to be honest, do you know what? Oh, gosh, man. Do you know what I have to do now to voice dub plates? I have mm -hmm. to work more hours. Mm -hmm. So it has an effect on my life. Yeah. And I've got a family. Mm -hmm. So 
because of the cost of dub plates, I have to do them things. Mm. But because of my passion for sound system and where I want to take it, because I've, I've, I haven't taken it half as far as I, as I want to yet. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been a lot of places and done a lot in Sound Clash. But for me now, the sound is just about to, the, the sound is just starting. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Even though we've done a lot already, mm -hmm. we're just now very organized. Mm -hmm. and we're just now starting to click things in the right places in the way it should be. Mm -hmm. So the dub plate cutting now, even though it's expensive, I tend to um, I tend to just work out the best way, mm -hmm. take the best route, and voice the right artists that I feel need to voice yeah. because there's just so many of them. Mm -hmm. As you're aware, and the prices of artists is crazy. Like popcorn is like 2,000 US dollars. Yeah. You know, um, I, I mean... I'll be honest. I don't think I can. I can afford them. Them money there, mm -hmm. but you know, well, they you never say never. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you've, it's you've, difficult. You've constantly put yourself in, in, in that level where I think you have a, your catalog alone speaks for itself. Yeah. So as a selector and a sound man, I'm sure there's, there's it's just the way how you kind of play songs and, and put certain songs together. Yeah, and put exactly. Together. Exactly. And and that kind of like brings me into your new team that you have mm -hmm. right now, which is interesting mm. we're going to speak to them look later on yeah, yeah um what makes you think everything is pretty much in check right now right so th the reasons why i know um it's you know it's 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 very organized now and we're on the right track is because since of all the works that we've done mm -hmm. um with the new team now that we have and that's not it is a new team but We've been together for a good while now, to be honest. Mm. Some of members have been here a couple of years now. Mm. So it's not like it's brand new. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of work yeah. has been done and achieved in that time. Mm. So we've reset as the new team. Mm -hmm. um, me, myself, I, I, I kind of come to the team and say to the team, and I've said to the team from day one, this is my plan. This is the way I want to really take the sound mm -hmm. for this, in this reason. And obviously everybody has their input. Mm -hmm. So everybody's equal, but everybody has their input, Yeah, you know? Um, so we reset. We've gone back to Telford. We've started juggling in Telford regularly again. Yeah. Building a very big fan base in Telford right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're playing. Lots of people are coming out to, to Natural Affair in Telford. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of like, cause, because Natural Affair was moving in a certain direction, I never got the chance to do certain things in Telford and interact with the people correctly. Yeah. So now... We've reset with the new team, interacted with our own people again in mm -hmm. Telford, and it's working. Yeah, lots of people are coming out. You, you you answered the question that I was going to ask, and yeah, d what so you're doing right now is definitely a, a big deal, man. Right. So, it, it, and it's massive for me as mm -hmm. a person who comes from Telford and what I did for years ago. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like we had a massive crowd years ago, mm -hmm. and then because Natural Affair kind of came out of Telford as such, um. And we was doing like, so many other things and because I got a family. I was I was unable to un to educate them the right way. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, man. 100%, so man. so now with the new team, we've we've begin we've begun that yeah. education in Telford. Is that literally bringing Natural Affair back to Telford, even right. though it didn't go anywhere? And a big fan base mm -hmm. in Telford right now. Yeah. A massive massive fan base. Mm -hmm. We're playing from three to four different venues, and the fan base is traveling. Mm -hmm. So. It's a big, massive thing for us right now. A Trust big thing me. for me. UK sound system culture. Where is it at right now? What, what, what do you feel? What, if I said to you, sound system culture in the UK is, what would you say? Um, it's, I, I, I don't think, I don't think it's, it, it, it's, it's okay, you know. It's just okay. Mm -hmm. After big up the sounds that's putting in the works and obviously going to clashes, you know, and going into clashes. Mm -hmm. So the sounds out there trying, you know, there are sounds out there that's doing this. They are doing it and trying to make things happen. So you have to big them up, big them sounds up. But the way I see the sound, the sound clash culture as such in the UK, I feel when certain events, even if it's big name sounds, mm. I, feel, I think they, they, f they find it hard to attract, a, you know, a good crowd, a big mm. crowd. Mm -hmm. So I feel there's something missing from it. 
if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. to be in a sound clash nowadays and to voice how much thousands and thousands of pounds worth of songs, mm-hmm. then to, to you know to to make it to make it worthwhile, then really you have to be paid a, you know a good amount of money. Yeah. The promotion has to be right and all that kind of stuff. But as a sound owner and being in this business, I know that it's difficult to do that because mm-hmm. promoters can't really afford to pay two grand or even a thousand pound even mm-hmm. for, for a sound to go into these clashes. So to make them happen, the sounds have to really come together and just say, I'll just take this yeah. and I'll go in it. And over the years, that's what Natural Affairs always done mm-hmm. to make it happen, to be involved in it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's some clashes we've been, I'm going to tell you on camera now, we haven't even got no money. Mm-hmm. Because well, that's what we do. We eat and we just we just love Sound Clash. Mm. So we're spending all this money, it's a big deal, man. but going yeah, to Sound yeah. Clash. Mm. But with our marketing and with the way we go, we we've you know progressed as such. This is why, like now, Natural Affairs taking a different route. Mm-hmm. Now, not to say that we're not going to go into any Sound Clash, because mm-hmm. we will take Sound Clash because we voice to be in Sound Clash. We voice yeah. hard. We've never stopped voicing. But at the same time. It has to be like worthwhile now, and that's not just the funding and what the promoter can give us. Mm. It's more of a thing where the package on how what's you know how they're going to put this together. Because I just feel it doesn't matter really what sounds like if you, even if it's a V Rock, it's an LP. Mm-hmm. The way I see it, they're supposed to be pulling big crowds, okay. but I don't think it, uh, you know certain dance hasn't done that. Mm. Other than like what I seen was was the massive was massive was Saxon Love Injection. That did it, yeah. and I know that has an appeal because of the two sounds. But that brought a massive crowd. But since that, even the big crowds, other than you know, obviously UK Rumble brings a crowd because yeah. it's a branded thing and people mm-hmm. wait for that every year, so that works. But other clashes, I just feel it's hard. So, as a sound system, and the way the culture is, you have to find an avenue to take it. Mm-hmm. So with Natural Affair now, with the new team, we kind of look at it and say right. We have an avenue to go down, and that's where we stay. Wow, big! Because of the way the business is right now. Mm-hmm. So, people, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to wrap it up right there. I'm not going to go into no controversy and what you think about this sound and that. Yeah. You know, we're gonna we're gonna. This is the thing where, um, if you're watching right now, it's kind of like the past, present, future, and then more interviews are going to come. We're going to have yeah. some sit down conversations. We're talking about just dubs. Definitely, we're yeah. going to talk about. S- sound system I'll probably come around to your unit mm. or wherever you can go through the, the amps yeah. and your show all those things are going to be nah, coming definitely anytime yeah. so um, I just want to say thanks man you know what I mean I've, I think you've, you've definitely put in the works then. Um, mm. you're still here you're still representing we're going to speak to the rest of the team then very yeah. soon so just final fi- final words t- for your fans and everybody who's watching right now well yeah I just want to just pick up everybody really that supports Natural Affair and always supported us and stayed stayed with us you know, because people know our potential. Um, we've got a lot of things coming up, some crazy stuff. Like my, my one of my goals in like ninety seven, ninety eight, when I first started, was to reach Japan to mm-hmm. play. Had a yeah. cassette with Red Spider on it, a sound called Burn Down. No English was on the cassette, pure Japanese. Mm-hmm. Couldn't understand what they were saying, but I knew the songs, and I thought to myself, that's where I want to be. Yeah. That's where I need to reach. And right now, we have a Japan tour starting October the sixteenth. I know. Don't rub it in. So I'm mad jealous about that. It's crazy, really. So <laughs> like things when are I really. Seen that one, I was like, wow. So y- you know, for, for Natural Affair, people know us worldwide. You know, we 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 are a sound that people really know us, and it's mm-hmm. really surprising. You know, it's really that's what gives me the the ambition. It gives me that that push mm-hmm. that people do rate us, and we have a lot of respect. You know, yeah. we have a lot of respect in the business, to be honest. And people do rate us, and um, yeah, going to Japan. October 16th, we have about four dates, Mm -hmm. Kobe, Osaka, and a few other um, cities and towns. Okay. So, yeah, and also October the 12th, we're going to be in Amsterdam. Okay. Yeah, um, with Foundation. I'm sure you know about Foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sincerity, you know about. Okay. And also a sign from Germany, Sensi Movement. I've heard of them as well. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be there. We'll have a, a lots of things happening in Telford because, like I say, we, we're on this our H our base right now yeah. with our fans. Mm-hmm. You know, really making the fans happy, interacting with our fans right now. There, you know, we're we're there right now. That's it. Mm-hmm. And you know, we we have, we have quite a lot of dates. Yeah, 
Well, it's going to be massive, man. Trust me. I think what we're going to do, um, probably after the Japan tour, yeah, we'll, we'll link up we'll again. You can tell it, yeah. me what's going on in Japan and, and, and what the vibes was and where you're going to go from there into 2020. But once again, Junior P, Natural Affair, mm. not Natural Affairs. <laughs> it's Natural Affairs Sound inside mm. the building. Thank you so much for taking the time out. And we'll speak to you very soon. Yeah, my most respect. Thanks a lot, yeah?